Mexico, Mexico, they've got muchas, muchachas, amigo. Hey, welcome to Durr's place. I'm Durr. You know, did a lot of bike rides, actually rode across the continent three times. Um, and it was amazing. It really was. It's memories that I'll always have. Um. Uh, Another memory I had was the food that we had all across the United States, especially the, the Southwest, um, New Mexico, Arizona. Uh, we traveled right down through Tombstone, uh, right down probably about 15 miles from the Mexican border. Uh, so we did get a hint of Mexican food. Uh, were we a great fan at the time? No, because I don't like heat. I like the flavor, but I don't like hot food. So, I've come up with and found a beautiful chili sauce. It's Grajillo pepper sauce. It's really, really good. It brings out the flavor. It's got a little heat, but it's not really intense. But the flavor is fantastic. So, we're going to do a Mexican dinner and... I'm going to make, I got some pork roast down in the freezer. I'm going to bring that up that I had smoked. I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to incorporate it with the, the chili sauce. Um, I'm going to do some black beans, some rice. And hey, as my mother always said, you got to have your greens. So we're going to do some green beans, blackened, sauteed, and put some cilantro and lime on it. Hey, you know what? It's it's good recipe. It's it's fun and it's nice. And this is all in the scheme of things. Let's change things up. Yeah, we're stuck in the house all the time. Blah, 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 blah. You hear whining every day. Oh, the kids are in school. The kids are out of school. Blah, blah, blah. I can't go anywhere. I don't want to go anywhere. You know what? We all need to just exhale and enjoy ourselves when we can and do something for ourselves. Hey, for me, it's cooking. So, hey, let's do some cooking. Yeah! Okay, to start with, I got my cast iron pan here. Um, no grease, just cast iron pan. I've wiped it out and I've got it set at medium. So, garlic, okay? Six cloves of garlic. Um, I like big garlic because I really like garlic. Um, don't peel it. Just leave it like that. And you're going to stick it on here. And you're going to let them just get happy. About 15 minutes. And turn them once in a while. Um, you're not seeing sizzling anything else because it's just heating up now. But what you're doing is... Garlic is very complex in flavor. Yeah, you could say, oh, it's garlicky. But you know what? If you cook it right and you prepare it right, there's so many different ways garlic can go. And what I'm doing is I'm literally cooking the garlic. And what it does is it brings the sugars out in the garlic and softens that pungent garlic flavor. Uh, it gives it a really nice aroma. While they're on, I've got my chilies. Now, these chilies I got from, where else? Amazon. Okay, one day delivery, and I got six ounces of chili. And all I'm going to do is, I'll do all these later, but what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take a chili, like so. I'm going to take the stem off it. Like so. Now, the heat of these chilies actually come from the seeds. So, we are not going to use the seeds. I'm going to cut them. Cut them. I'm going to cut them. Come on, knife. All, right, all the way down. Like so. And I'm going to open them up. Like so. Get rid of all the seeds. Ah! And you see these 
vines here, these things that restrict place, you're going to take those off too, because that's where your heat is, is in those veins, just like so. And what I'm going to do is, after I finish with my garlic, I'm going to take these and I'm going to put them on and cook these two. Make sure you get all the seeds. If you don't want it hot, if you want it hot, leave a few seeds in, leave the veins in. Myself, I like to get all the, there's some more there, see? Just little strings. So that nice and flat, like this. And once this garlic is cooked up, which I'm just going to turn now, it's not really that hot yet. We're just coming up to some heat now. As you can see, I'm using my fingers. Uh, about 15 minutes. If these garlics start to turn a little black, no biggie. That's what you want. You want them to turn a little black. It's, they're cooking in the inside, and that's why you leave that skin on, so that you can protect the garlic from the heat, but in the same time, cook it. Anyways, we'll be back once this garlic's done, and we'll go forward. Okay, as you can see, our garlic is turned black on us. As you can see, and they're nice and soft. So we're just gonna let these set aside, and we're gonna let these cool. Now in the same pan, at the same temperature, now we're going to take our peppers, or our chilies, I should say. Um, we're going to take them and put skin side up, and we're just going to place them here for a couple minutes. You should hear a little bit of a crackle. Flip them over. Voila. All this is about flavor, and by doing that. I may find one more here. So what you're doing is you're bringing the sugars out, you're bringing a little bit of smokiness out of the peppers, which is the end game, right? Flavor. Don't have to be a long time. As you can see, press them with this, your spatula like so, and they're done. As you can see, a little blackening on both sides, and that's it. Okay, I'm going to do the rest, and I'll be back. Okay, as you can see, I've got all my peppers. And you can see a little bit of black, some little bit of tan. And that's what you want. You don't want to burn them. You just want to get them, let's see, like this. See, a little bit of black, a little bit of tan. Okay. So what we're going to do now, we put them all in this bowl, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to pour hot water over them, and that will hydrate the peppers again, bring them back to life, and they'll sit in this hot water now for 30 minutes, and they're just getting happy now, whoa, hold on, okay, so... We've got our peppers in. They're soaking now. Just get them in there. Get them in the water. Like so. Once they soften up, they'll all go down. Don't thread about it. So, 30 minutes. We're going to let these soak. Our garlic, as you can see, are nice and toasty. I'll peel those and have those ready. And we'll be back. Okay, our chilies now have been soaking in water, hot water, for about 30 minutes. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to drain them. I've seen some recipes where they keep it, keep the water and use the water, but I find it gives a, a little bit of a bitterness to it. So I would, uh, I'd recommend you drain them. We can add, always add flavor, right? Okay, so I'm going to take these chilies, and I'm just going to dump them in my food processor. They're all nice and happy now. They're almost alive. They're alive.
alive. Just tuck them all in there, like so. And there, there's all our chilies. They're in, ready to go. So, with that, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of Mexican oregano. Mexican oregano. You'll say, oh geez, uh, I only got ordinary oregano. You can use ordinary oregano, but it's not as strong as Mexican. Um, so just add a little more if that's all you have. Like improvise. Don't don't do this recipe because oh I don't have I don't have the oregano. And of course, like typical me, I add a little more. Okay, with that, our garlic that we cooked, we're gonna throw that in too. And they're all nice and squeezy, as you can see. They're Oh, they're happy. Throw those in. Cumin. Here we go again with the cumin. I'm going to do a... I'm doing a little more because I like it. But start off at an eighth of a teaspoon. You're not wanting it to overpower. You just want it to blend in with the rest. And two-thirds of a cup of beef broth. All we're gonna do now is mix it up. Okay, be right back. A little bit of a cluster because I forgot to get the lid for the for the food processor. Okay, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this sucker on. And we just want to bring this right to a a free egg. As you can see, it's starting to get nice and happy now. Smelling good. We've got a ways to go. Anyways, I'm going to finish preheating this and I'll be right back. Here we have it. Now, what I found was, is that when it was going, it was way too thick. So I added a little more beef broth to it to bring it to this. Almost like a pudding, right? Okay, so we got our strainer here. I'm just going to put that on there and I'm going to press it through like so. Patience. Patience is a virtue. Um, yeah, so you just get rid of any pieces of skin or that that aren't there and you just get the nice smooth peppers and all the spice and the garlic and everything else. Um, be patient with it. It'll, it'll all go through. Takes just a little while. If you had one with a bowl, I don't have a big enough one or I would use it. So I'm using this one here and it's going to take me a little bit. So anyways, I'll get through this and I'll be back. Okay. We've got her all done. Almost looks like ketchup, same consistency. So I'm going to first turn my oven. I got my four quart Dutch oven here and I'm going to heat this oil up. And then once that's up to temperature, I will take this and the puree from the peppers and I'll do that. While I'm waiting for it to heat up, I'm going to throw in Oh, a half a quarter teaspoon of, of black pepper. I mean, this is something you can always add later, but add that much right now. Get that all nice and happy. As you can see, it's a little bit, it's like a cream soup almost. That's the consistency you want. Um, when I was doing this, uh, pressing it out, 
and cut. I didn't have, I only had a fine uh, strain, strainer. A medium would be better. I ended up getting cheesecloth and putting it in the cheesecloth and squeezing it all out to get this consistency. So, hey, if you got cheesecloth, fine. If you got a medium strainer, that's perfect, okay? And just press it through until you get this consistency here. Anyways, we'll be back once this oil heats up. Okay, our oil's heated up, and how I know you want it is if you tap some there and you start to see it sizzle, then you know that you're at the right temperature. So, with that, I'm going to take this and I'm going to pour it all in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to reduce this now. all that goodness and we're gonna cook this for about seven minutes until it reduces down now I used olive oil about uh, uh, about one and a half tablespoons of olive oil in this pot and uh, oh, I want to get it all there we go So, we're going to let this get happy now for about seven minutes and let it thicken up. It's going to turn to a darker red than it is, almost like a brown. Uh, and we'll be right back. Okay, here we are. We've got it down to a consistency of a paste. And now I'm going to add three cups of broth. Whoa, get it in there. Like so. Stir it up. And this is going to sit now and simmer. I'm going to bring it to a boil first and then I'll take it down to a simmer, partially cover it, and we'll be back in 30 minutes. Okay, so it's been 45 minutes. I didn't like how thin it was, and uh, now it's just perfect. As you can see, it should be like a, like a light cream soup consistency. There it is. While you're gone, I did put in a can, one can of tomato paste in. And I did, to taste, I added salt. I added about uh, a teaspoon of salt. And I also added about one and a half teaspoons of sugar. Now the sugar kills the uh, the chili tartness, the edge to it, and the salt brings out the flavor. So there we have it. There's our sauce, our chili sauce, ready for tomorrow night. Um, I'm going to continue cooking and I'll, uh, I've got a couple uh, things of pork out. I've got a, a pork loin, a smoked pork loin that I've got out from the freezer and a pork shoulder. So with that, some rice, black beans, and uh, oh, we'll think of a few other things. Uh, we'll be back. Bye-bye. I'm also going to do a rice for tomorrow night's dinner. Uh, it's going to be a lemon and dill rice. Uh, it'll match well with the uh, chili sauce that I made and the uh, pork. Um, it's easy to do. It's not complicated at all and I'm going to take you through it and uh, yeah it's one of Carol's favorites. So hey let's go do some more cooking. Okay I've got my chicken stock on and I put in uh, some lemon juice about a quarter cup of lemon juice in there along with your chicken broth, which is roughly about two cups of chicken broth. I'm going to bring that to a boil, just like you cook any other rice. And once that hits a boil, which it should be soon, um, then I can add my dill and my rice, and uh, we'll cover it and let it simmer for 20 minutes. Okay, we got a full boil now, so now we can throw our rice in. Little more than a cup of rice. Stir that in. 
as I say, this is just like cooking rice. And I'm going to throw, I'm using fresh dill. You can use a uh, dried drill, grill. I put lots of dill in because Carolyn likes it. Um, you might only want to put in a um, little uh, couple tablespoons. I've got probably about three, close to four in there. So she's brought up to a boil now. So all I'll do is I'll cover it and I'll bring it down to a simmer and uh, roughly about 20 minutes. She'll be ready. Well, it's been 20 minutes now and oh, fabulous. Let's pop this rice up. Beautiful. So, there's part of our Mexican dinner, the rice, along with the, uh, the chili sauce that we've made. And uh, now I'm going to do the uh, black beans. Be right back. Okay, continuing with our Mexican dinner, um, we're going to start on the black beans. Now, sometimes I just throw the black beans on. They're good. I love black beans. But today I'm going to do a restaurant style black beans. It's not anything over the top. It's some garlic. It's some onion. Uh, it's really good. And it's going to mix with the rice and the chili sauce that I've made, along with the roast pork and the, uh, the beans. Anyways, let's continue on and let's get cooking. Okay, we got our onions sauteing here. I used about, uh, about a half of a onion, a medium onion. Okay, now that they started to turn, a little dark, a little clear, a little dark. Um, we're gonna throw in some cumin, cumin, which about half a teaspoon of cumin. You wanna put some garlic in there. Do, 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 do. Some garlic. garlic. I'm using about a clove and a half of garlic. Now I'm doing a half batch here because we don't need that much. So and I'm just going to stir that around just a little bit. You'll see it's quite dry but the spices are getting in there. So we'll let that sit for a couple minutes. Okay, now that they've sat there yeah, about a minute, two minutes, I'm going to add just a little bit of cayenne pepper. There. And stir that in. And you'll, you'll find the onions are really dry at this point. We'll fix that right now because we're going to pour in the black beans with the juice. Don't strain them. Don't clean them out. You want it all. Okay. Let me get all this out of here. Just like that. Now I'm going to add uh, maybe a half a teaspoon of salt. like so and we're just gonna let those simmer for a couple minutes while they're simmering I'm gonna take uh, about I want to say about a tablespoon and a half of butter and just put that in there and let it all get happy just like so and we're just gonna let that simmer Just like so. 
Now that it's been simming for a couple minutes, and the butter's melted in, I'm also going to take some cilantro. About a quarter cup cilantro. I love cilantro. I mean, most of my cooking and that, uh, it's just so fresh. Some people love it, some people hate it. Um, because it's one of those acquired tastes. You don't have to put it in if you don't want to, or you can put it in if you want to. Okay, we're going to let this sit, and we'll be back. Okay, so there's your black beans, restaurant style, all ready. Looking beautiful. Anyways, we'll see you tomorrow for more of our Mexican dinner. Okay, we're on day two of our dinner, dinner tonight. I know it's a long one but it is going to be good. So what I've done is in this blender here, I've put in two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons, maybe a little more of lime juice, a little bit of lime zest like I always do, quarter teaspoon of salt and some ground pepper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add this is roughly, if you press it down, a quarter cup of cilantro, fresh cilantro. I'm going to put it in here. Now what we're making is a green bean charred uh, dish. It's a, it's a Mexican dish. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to take green beans, we're going to char them. And then we're going to throw this vinaigrette on it. Uh, and it's, it is really, really good. So. That's all it is. It's very simple. I like to do it a couple hours before um, before I'm ready to do the beans so that everything kind of has time to get happy. And all I'm going to do is stick this in my blender here. Don't use your fingers. Mm, it's perfect. It's going to be really nice for the, the green beans. So, actually, I can just take this now. If you, if you got some larger pieces, don't worry about it. Because you're going to garnish it with a little bit of cilantro before you serve it. Just to make it look nice. So, I'll just put this on the fridge. And uh, we're going to start it in a couple hours with the green beans. Um... Uh, then we just have to do our meat, and uh, Carolyn's going to do some uh, flatbread, homemade flatbread, and we're going to be good to go. We'll be back. Okay, as you can see, I've got my green beans. i coated them with some peanut oil. Peanut oil, why peanut oil? Because it smokes less at high heat. I've got my... Uh, skillet here, cast iron skillet. She's getting hot. You can see she's starting to smoke. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take these beans. I'm going to throw them on there like that. As you can hear, I got my fan on, exhaust fan on, because it, it's going to get a little smoky here. And I'm going to actually do these for about oh, five to seven minutes until I start getting some nice char marks on them. So, anyways, uh, I'll see you in one of the smoke clears. Okay, we survived the smoke, and here they are. And just like this, uh, they are just delicious. Huh. But, what we're going to do now, we've got the smokiness. And the peanut oil really adds to the flavor, too. So in actual fact, you could eat them like this, and it'd be it's it's wonderful. So we got our vinaigrette. I'm just going to shake it up a little bit here, and easy pleasy. Just going to pour that over top. Now you can eat these beans cold, room temperature, or hot, like we're going to do. And they are delicious. They're very fresh. Um, 
Yeah, they're just, they're so good. And with our Mexican meal, they will be just lovely. Anyways, okay, our beans are done, meat to go, and uh, we'll be all ready to uh, start setting this up. So, hey, see you in a bit. Okay, as you can see, I've got my pork. Uh, this is smoked pork out of my freezer. I had a, a shoulder, a part of a shoulder, and uh, uh, a loin, and I've torn it up. And what I'm going to do now is I've put my sauce that I made yesterday, I put that on it. I'm going to cover it in tin foil. Uh, we're going to eat in probably an hour. Yeah, about an hour or so. So I'm going to put tin foil over top of it, stick it in the oven at 300 or just slightly less than 300, uh, just to get a nice slow heat up on it. I don't want to dry the meat out. And uh, in my cast iron, I love cast iron. It's fabulous for this. And uh, in an hour, it should be ready to pull out, and we can do the plating. Carolyn's got the uh, flatbread on its way, and. Uh, yeah, it's it's all good. So we'll see you in an hour. Bye bye. Okay, we've got it plattered. We've got our pork with the sauce on it, rice, lemon rice with a little bit of sauce, your beans, the black beans, and Carolyn's flatbread. This is a fantastic dinner. I mean, you just got to look at it and go, wow. Um, not because I made it, just because we've done it a few times and always enjoyed it. So look at it. I know it's been a long video, but this is really worth it. For me, at least. Till next time. See you later. Be well. Bye-bye. We'll live it up and love it up, amigo. Life begins when you